5105, the No Name Show. White Stripes on the Bay Area's Live 105. We've got a, a very special in studio guest. Ladies and gentlemen, put your effing hands together for Greg Geraldo. Yeah. Hooray! Talking about. Hooray! Hooray! We should have Greg. He, Greg, Greg was just saying how he's playing that big Bonnaroo festival. We should have, we should have Greg play BFD 2010. Awesome. We have our yep. own rock festival going on here, Greg. Let's do it, man. We're all excited about. But you've never played. You've never done like a festival before. I've never done a festival, but I'm uh, I'm going to now. Yeah. It's all festivals all the time. <laughs> I'm just gonna do all festivals, man. Yeah. I'm gonna get some shorts and some uh, flip flops. That was what you need, right? Flip flop. Yeah. And a hacky sack. Hacky sack, big bag of acid, mushrooms, yeah. ecstasy. A van to live in, and, and yeah, you're all good. Van. Exactly. Uh, last time you were in here, Greg, uh, we kind of had, well, we started to have kind of a man circle, dude. Yeah, and dude. You, I know you're going through some troubling times, uh, going through the big divorce and all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, and I was like, yeah, we're talking about we're yeah, talking about how yeah. we're like all like, you know, dirt bags and scumbags. And uh, you went off on, on one of the most inspirational tirades I've heard in a long time about how even though men think we're dirt bags, like on ourselves, that we're not. Right, and I, I just feel like I just feel like I'm entering that man circle once again. I'm not saying I have a man crush on you, dude. I just well, you, you were speaking the truth, dude. I don't remember exactly what I said or what it I was talking genius. about. But, but was, was, did I talk? I mean, like this, uh, the latest is the sex addiction thing. I don't know if that that we might have been talking about that. Normally, I, I, I was it wasn't that long ago. Normally, I'd come through about once a year, but I think I came through re- more recently. So. What do you mean? It wasn't about sex addiction. You were very angry. You were basically like. I mean, yeah, I'm, but I'm, man, I'm not, not being in control of any. No, but but the, the, well, sex addiction is my latest thought about it because everybody now gets caught and you have to have a sex addiction, you know, and that becomes that's like the new thing. Normal male Tiger behavior Woods, now. Yeah, now it's like Jesse now it's James. like you got the rehab thing. You go to you know you go to like a, I don't know I don't know what we could say on the radio. Never mind. You go, you, go to, you go to a certain kind of prison for a certain kind of thing, you know, and then you you you're somehow uh, are absolved now by like I love you. I'll just go away for 60, 60 days, you know that. Anyway, my point is that that normal male, be- like now, oh, I'm a sex, I have a sex addiction, which is another way of saying you're a normal dude over the age of twelve. Yeah, and now we have to go away to prison if you well, get caught. And this is the thing that kind of bothers me, because uh, in the world, you know, who makes the rules? Men, right? Well, you'd think so. So who defines all the, uh, you know, the deviant behavior? Like, why don't we take it easy on ourselves and and just, you know, like redefine deviant behavior as normal behavior? Well, actually, I can't tell if we're just the most whipped morons on the planet or genius, it, by, because there's new sex rehab stuff. Like when you get caught, now you're like, hey. I just got to go away to the rehab. I got an addiction. <laughs> it's, it's all, I'm sorry. I'm sick. You know, I'm not a, I'm not an a-hole. I'm just yeah. sick. I got a little something wrong. I got a which, problem. Which that, that, oh, but by the way, if, if you think men are making the rules, I was reading Rolling Stone yesterday, and yeah. they were, uh, uh, you know, Mike Campbell, the guitarist from Tom Petty yeah. and the Heartbreakers, he, th- there was an interview with him, uh, you know, how, and the new album, he's really finally stepping up and really playing for real because he's such a great guitarist, and he said he bought this new Gibson Les Paul, the 1959 original Gibson Les Paul. There's only 1,500 of them in the world, and they cost 250 grand. Jesus. To buy, and he says he bought one and it changed his playing. He said he bought it uh, with the permission of his wife. Like, ah! what? You are a rock star. His wife. Oh, does she? Is she making the hit records? Yeah. Like he wants to buy a guitar. He's, he's one of the top guitarists in the world, and he wants to buy a guitar for himself. And his wife. Is it okay, but honey? Mean, please. That, I, I think that makes the, like the average dude feel better. You know, like his wife tells him. You know, when but that's why the they we're all like, just, I, I'm so disgusted with the whole world when it comes to that. It really is just you know, like like and, and John Legend. Even there was another. That was another thing. I don't know if I'm just looking for these things or I'm seeing them everywhere now. <laughs> when Sports Illustrated, John Legend's model girlfriend, she goes, you know, she, she's like some little model. You know, yeah. it's like a, she's she's here. She'll be gone in three years when she's way over the hill. You know, she's 17 or something. When yeah. she's over the hill at 20, she's gone. Exactly. And John Legend's girlfriend says, uh, she goes, you know, he, he people don't know that he makes great fried chicken and mac and cheese. That's the only reason I put up with his eight-hour football marathons on Sunday. That's the only reason? Yeah, that's you it. entitled skank? That's the only Whore. reason? Whore. It's called, a, it's, it's called a bank account. Don't lie I to mean, us. I just don't. I just don't understand this entitlement that these women have. No, you do nothing. You do nothing. You've done nothing but be born. He's like an eight-time Grammy-winning musician. Yeah. But yeah, but you tolerate his football. But, when, she, when do we, but, when do we... but, but she must have like mad crotch skills or something. You know what she I'm talking be, about? Yeah, I'm sure I mean, she does. But so do tons of them. Yeah, it's true. Well, you I'm sure know. it's a lot easier to fight. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah those are easy to fight. <laughs> Uh, I love it, dude. I love it. Uh, I, I, I just, I, I love, I love your, your pure vision there. But I, I think the thing is, I think the relationships go wrong when, uh, when basically dudes let their their ladies become their moms. You know, and I understand you want your lady to do your wash and all that stuff, but all of a sudden they're like they're telling you what to do and they're, and, yeah. you know, they're, they're basically your mom. 
Yeah, I don't know what. I mean, I don't, and I don't. This, I mean, I love women. I'm not, you know, like a misogynist yeah. about women at all. I think something's happened in the system, and I'm not sure what that we've gone we, from being the king of the castle it, to the. I, I'm it? not exactly sure what we can do. Come on, women man. themselves always say, "Well, I want a real man that does what he wants." They're like, oh, really? And you do what you want, <laughs> and then look what happens. You get a golf club through your windshield. Yeah, exactly. I love, but you, you, see, you seem like you're in a better mood, a little bit more. Uh, I'm yeah. feeling all right these days. You know, yeah. everything's uh, everything's coming together. Maybe because I because of healthcare reform, now I feel so good. There, you know, you're gonna be. Taking I, I just care walk of. the streets. I just feel like everything's everybody's covered. You actually, <laughs> you the actually, whole world's changed. You actually feel healthier. You're like, I feel oh. a lot healthier. I, I saw this woman in one of the protests. She was holding up a sign that said, "Healthcare reform equals Nazi death camps." Yeah. I thought, wow. Is that that's what the, that's what Hitler was up to. <laughs> Affordable healthcare. Yeah. I, I love any type of protest because of the extremes that you see on signs. It could be you could be protesting anything, and everything's related to Nazis. Yeah, the Nazis are very involved in everything lately. Yeah. There's it's a like, lot of Nazis. It's like they're, it's like the throwback. Like, <laughs> ah, nah. like, but most people like nowadays like, they they don't even read history books in high school. They're like, what are the Nazis? Like, what's yeah. going on here? Well, Jesse James apparently was really into the Nazis too. Yeah, I, I love how they dug everything up. Like, like I, I think I understand is like his whole logo was like the Iron Maltese Cross, whatever you want to call it. It's like, <laughs> oh wow, he yeah. had not he had other Nazi paraphernalia. The best thing I heard is that he had a uh, a surfboard with Adolf Hitler on the back of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. Wait a minute, a a white tattooed biker from California is maybe possibly kind of, kind of interested in uh, Nazism. Yeah, that's just, a surprise. Just classic, classic. Uh, Greg uh, is at Cobb's all weekend, uh, even doing the Sunday show, which I love. Yeah, I don't think I did it last time, but I'm yeah. um, I'm up for Sunday, man. I got to stick around the West Coast for a little bit, so West might as well Coast! do Sunday. What else you got going on uh, while you're over here? Um, I'm judging Last Comic Standing, this season of Last Comic Standing, so cool. I, I gotta, I'm going to L.A. to do some press for that, and uh, uh, I'm doing a pilot for Spike, which I'm working on also a little bit in L.A. Hey, can you give us any details or is all top it's, uh, it's, uh, No, it's, uh, it's, it, we're, we haven't shot it yet, but it's writing it and working on it, and uh, believe it or not, it's about it's uh, trying to find what the worst race in America is. <laughs> And we really try to figure out who's gonna who's gonna run America in the future, and, and we actually got like like real sociologists and and uh, I'm a sociologist, like top, bro. We have top PhDs in the country that wrote a formula that we could use. So we're gonna go out. We talk to some some Nazis and some some uh, everybody. It's really gonna be very interesting. Uh, hopefully, you know. You got a title for it yet? Uh, no. Okay. Probably Greg will never work in America again. <laughs> There's one way to... His uh, name is Greg Giraldi. He's at okay. Cobbs. We can go see him. Greg, thanks for checking in, bro. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. Thanks. Live.